how day starts in Kharkiv. Rescuers scrambling in the rubble after a dawn raid. And three metres beneath twisted steel and concrete, a survivor. The few moments of relief in Ukraine are to be celebrated. Here in the southern city of Mariupol, the bombardment has been relentless, the focus singular. And today in a mission, the city is all but taken by Russia. And for the first time, Ukraine is now cut off from the Sea of Azov. On the ground, defiance laced with despair. Pointing to the destruction and pleading with Western leaders for air defences. Air defences to protect the reported 300,000 civilians trapped inside this living hell with no electricity, no gas and no water. Yesterday, a brief humanitarian corridor, the traffic only one way. There is no Mariupol. We sat in the cellar for 10 days and did not leave once. We neither had water nor electricity. Today, Russia flexed while the terrorized fled. These pictures released by the Defense Ministry in Moscow. Beneath the jet, a hypersonic missile. It travels five times the speed of sound and they claim this was the moment it was used to destroy an underground arms depot. No need for anything so sophisticated in Kyiv. This the result of artillery which Western officials say Russia can sustain for a considerable period of time. Ukraine says there is damage to both sides in this war. US officials estimate in little more than three weeks, 7,000 Russian soldiers have been killed. But it's peace the wartime president wants. I want everyone to hear me now, especially in Moscow. The time has come for a meeting. It is time to talk. The time has come to restore territorial integrity and justice for Ukraine. Otherwise, Russia's losses will be such that it will take you several generations to recover. Russia says it too wants peace, but Ukraine was stalling talks with, quote, unrealistic proposals. It's the invaders who are unrealistic, say Western watchers. It's uh, inconceivable to me at this stage, particularly with the Ukrainian army doing so well, that Zelensky could accept a, a formal recognition of Crimea as being Russian and a formal recognition of the two eastern provinces as being so-called independent republics. And what comes after blood-soaked peace? Ukraine warned today it will take years to rid the nation of landmines, longer still to rebuild. And then there is the irreplaceable. Back in Mariupol, officials say more than 1,300 people are still missing since this theatre was bombed. For them, say locals, just prayer. Well, earlier I spoke to the former Russian MP and Putin supporter Natalia Naruchnitskaya, and I began by asking her whether the Russian people are distressed by or even aware of the scale of deaths of Russian soldiers in Ukraine. Honestly, it is not the topic to uh, so much discussed in the public, uh, you know, information field at all. And believe me, I'm, I'm absolutely honest. Uh, the other way around, it is said that uh, amazingly few, of course, uh, are perishing, but of course there are, you know, they are killed, and of course we are praying. I just returned from the church, praying for our for the souls of our uh, soldiers. But uh, believe me, this is not... The... Yesterday I was at the stadium where 200,000 of young people were shouting, you know, in a delirious, you know, happiness, Russia, Russia, Russia. They were very happy uh, to be there and to, to sing patriotic songs, etc. Because your information uh, picture for your audience and ours are completely different. It's clear that the information you're getting and the information the rest of the world is getting is very different, even down to the number of people in the stadium. It's interesting you say there were 200,000 people there because there were only 81,000 seats in the stadium. No, no, no. They were standing, you know, sitting on the, on the, on the, on the you know, on these um, what do you, steps, etc. So I know. We are certainly seeing video pictures and my colleagues are seeing things on the ground that say that a lot of civilians are being killed. Whatever your feelings about the politics, you must regret that these things are happening because some of them are war crimes. 
I'm no, I know for sure that our soldiers do not commit war crimes because that is the only reason why, in some opinion, they do not um, you know, march so rapidly uh, through the whole Ukraine because they could have, you know, already finished. Of course, casual, there are casualties, who, who absolutely, but uh, it is not our fault that um, the West has stuffed the uh, Ukrainian army with uh, NATO uh, latest, uh, you know, devices, etc. And we understand that in Russia, all the media is very heavily controlled by the state, and so perhaps you're not seeing the same images that the rest of the world is seeing. And we understand that you support your own country and your own army. But how are you going to win this war when the Russian army is being stopped from entering the cities? The operation is developing according to the plan. Uh, it is only naive people who uh, were thinking that this is just a country walk, uh, nice and easy. Uh, especially it is difficult exactly because of uh, a lot of civilians used as a uh, human shield, by, especially by the Nazi battalions. I understand you support Putin, you support Russia, you want Russia to win. But there are a huge number of lives being lost, and these are your brethren, these are your fellow people. You don't seem at all sorry about that. Oh, uh, not only sorry, I'm crying. We, we are now fighting against the remnants of Nazism that we erroneously thought uh, has been already crushed at all. There is a push by Western leaders to establish a war crimes tribunal and to try and investigate whether President Putin is a war criminal. Is he afraid of justice or will he face it? Listen, uh, do you really believe that the West is still, after what it has happened, is still the same and the world is the same as it used to be for 70 years? Now there will be another world with other categories, other values, etc. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, big cities in Poland are overcrowded and we will soon no longer be able to accommodate them. That's the warning from the mayors of Warsaw and Krakow about the pressure the flood of refugees from Ukraine is putting on their cities. Three million people are now estimated to have fled Ukraine, with the majority heading to Poland. And 150,000 of those desperate civilians have sought shelter in Krakow. Our correspondent, Darshna Sony has been there, following the journey of a 74-year-old grandmother who's been trying to reunite with her family in Berlin. <laughs> Krakow's sprawling station transformed into a gigantic refugee reception centre. Weary, after travelling thousands of miles to escape the conflict, some have no idea where they'll be tonight. This city is struggling to accommodate them all. Some will end up here, sleeping next to strangers. This is where we first meet Ulrika Stoiko. And your name is Ulrika? Ulrika. The 74-year-old grandmother arrived here yesterday. This huge tent with 70 beds has hurriedly been put up outside the station by the city council. Mrs. Stoika told us she'd lost her phone and was desperate to contact her daughter in Berlin. There are dozens of volunteers here, but they themselves have been overwhelmed, and it can mean new arrivals are left feeling lost and alone. Using our producer's phone, we managed to connect Mrs. Stoika and her daughter Luba. Luba, Luba. The relief at hearing her voice, difficult to describe. You. Mama, mama. I'm alive, she tells her, and I'm in Krakow. Her daughter tells Mrs. Stoika to catch a train to Berlin. But how to navigate this colossal station when you don't speak the language and aren't sure where to go? Okay, 
Okay. A group of German volunteers agree to help. Taxis for Solidarity are led by this teacher, Stefan Pietz. Krakow is relying on this informal international effort, but the city council tells me they are at bursting point. Krakow is full, but we expect for uh, uh, the next uh, three, four thousand people, and that's why we're preparing for that. Finally, a minibus bound for Berlin, a six hour journey ahead. Yeah? You're welcome. I made it, Mrs. Stoika tells us. I'm on my way. Ciao. <laughs>